In this Japan guide, I will teach you everything you need to know in order to beat China within a year, so you are finished before World War II, as well as help you understand Navy, as well as Air Force, and ultimately defeat the Allies without any issues. We're going to build some infrastructure in our two steel provinces, because we are in need of steel, and then we're going to build a few civ factories. You don't need to as Japan, but um, our civ industry is kinda ass, so I just wanna get it a little bit up and running. Research, the basic stuff, construction and engineering, and then with the fourth one, I guess we can get some gun upgrades and production also very simple we're just gonna delete everything here as for the boats a couple of these we can actually keep i think the congo the congo we might as well keep i mean we didn't it's not really that far in it's it's not that great of a ship design but i mean actually no wait, wait a minute i think that one has shite speed if i remember it correctly yeah no 24 speed i'm not gonna bother with that this carrier we can keep the sword you i mean for an ai carrier that's pretty okay we might as well finish the destroyers because well they're screening ships at the end of the day they're gonna get destroyed but we bump everything down one level and then we produce some convoys as always we're going to shift click the division icon up here so we get to stack up all divisions and then we assign them to a general and field marshal via right clicking i separated the marine and the truck we are going to separate two of the was it the hoi yeah two of the hoi shidan because that is a very chunky division compared to the scrap one the rest these horses and the tanks we can just convert into chuton shi chi into the crappy division. We might as well produce a few more marines just so we get to our cap. And then we're also going to queue up 20 of the Hoi Shidan. Decisions, not really have to think about anything. One thing that's busted is the prioritized steel for guns, four mill factories for 30 pp. The other ones are okay. Usually you will focus on the army because factory output is much better than dockyard output because army better than navy. We are also going to create an agency because we are going to fight China and I am not going to fight over here to cap china then let's take half of the crappy infantry we're going to dump these over here and take half of you over here so we have 13 on the front with china also i should have just drawn a front line whatever there we go and then in case we need it we can shuffle some of the reserve divisions to the front we should not need to but just occasionally take a look and see how the chinese push over there goes and potentially assign a couple from the fallback line to the front we still need to organize planes we're just going to delete all of these and then we're going to get these back we want the fighters and the cars just deploy all of these and then sell all tanks sell all planes and we're gonna sell 100 convoys yeah not 1000 100 there we go the planes we can put on high you could also put the convoys on high but with that we can ensure that they are being sold like it's not that big of a difference if they are on medium or high auto accept purchase requests let me just quickly check my notes just in case i haven't forgotten about anything oh right the oil trade we do have an oil trade which i don't give a shit about that just costs us two sif factories there we go we're just gonna click on all of these shift click on all of these anchors and get them over to yokohama army training shift left click these and these are already trained. That's about it for the starting moves. In terms of focuses, it's fairly simple because Japan's focus tree is kinda ass. We are just going to go down to our research slot. Then we get spiritual mobilization. So we get the uh, total mob very early. Then we do the Marco Polo for the China war. Then we pick up supremacy of will. And then there's a couple of things you can do. I personally will go for the range focus since our air MIOs are suboptimal. You can go for a heavy fighter design well, and then naval aircrafts and these two are the only ones that you can, like the only small fighter designs that you can go for. I'm not a huge fan of the high agility fighter design. That's just the bonuses are not that great. But for the Aichi, we get a bunch more range and speed for our fighters and cars, as well as a bit of ground attack for our cars. The tank designer, I am not gonna give a shit about. As Japan, you usually do not build tanks. Motorized is just much better for supply reasons in China. Now our ship designers, we have the battle line, obviously for uh, battle cruisers and battleships, task force for your capital ships, escort fleet for some nice destroyers, and then a raiding fleet for submarines. I did focus on Sasebo this game, but I probably should have focused on Maizuru instead, since we will need escort destroyers and not torpedo destroyers, but we'll get to that. And we are immediately going to send volunteers to Ethiopia, which is the two that I split off earlier, mainly because it pisses Mussolini off, and that's always a win. You can try and win the Ethiopian war, but I I'm not gonna bother. I honestly just care about the XP for these guys. We're going to make a general border, not a field marshal border. That way they can get a little bit of uh, organizer XP. Nope. There we go, Tanaka and this guy. Oh God, Ethiopia, what have you done? <laughs> 
<laughs> no, it's three divisions. Oh, all of my army XP. We are going to hire Kawashima because they are Chinese, which means they have a smaller chance of being caught with doing some dirty, dirty spy stuff in China. All right, prioritize steel for guns. And then we're just gonna go heavily into artillery. Can get one on train, I guess. But for now, I really want to focus on artillery and a little bit on infantry equipment. Yeah, the, the three divisions that were encircled down here really are not great. I, oh God, and <laughs> Ethiopia. Uh, but I guess we'll be a little bit weaker than we could be. Like, if you do it properly, they can get to veteran status, which is 75% combat bonus instead of 25. Once the Spanish Civil War kicks off, we are going to send some air volunteers and the three divisions that we split off to the non-line fascists. Also switch to local police force. I guess I could have done it earlier. And the Mariana Federation. Doesn't matter, but might as well put it on Civil oversight. With these three divisions, uh, we can also... I guess we can win the Spanish Civil War, but I don't really care either. I do like the spirit of the army reworks quite a bit. You have a bunch of choices now. A tip of the spear could be fun for more special forces, so you can really mess with China here. But professional officer corps is still your bread and butter, since the additional XP means your divisions are more likely to have higher level and thus have better stats. So I'm going to go with that today. Next, we are going to hire the ground support guy. Then we can also deploy the marines. We're gonna get theater training. to really like it because, like, you get more terrain XP and also pretty strategists. The brilliant strategists are not gonna matter because we have enough generals but you know the trade XP gain is very nice especially with all of the mountains in China. Speaking of China we're going to do a quiet internal network just so uh, this guy doesn't get shot. The navy we can also just there we go stack it up and as always we split off the submarines because they are slow. Our navy guy will be Yamamoto uh, because he's bald he's Spotter, a superior tactician, air controller, like he's a very good guy for some carrier gameplay, which I don't intend to, but I guess we can. And we also have a sea wolf. There we go, Daigo. And since we assigned Daigo to our submarine stack, we are also going to give him the Silent Hunt trait. Yamamoto, on the other hand, will get Torpedo Bomber and Cruiser Captain. Additionally, we train our fighters to level 3 via shift-clicking the training button. China does not have a huge air force, but we might as well train the fighters a bit so they get the stats. First thing I'm gonna do is... We're going to add some support RT and I would like motorized recon, but we do need trucks, so cav recon it is. Next, we prioritize army aircraft construction and then we are going to hire the elusive gentleman and start working on our intel agency. Here's the order that I went for. Funny pills, commander training, department, army department, air force department. Might as well get AA. All right, let's make the front a little bit smaller, although Nah, because it's anarchists, they're gonna pop up anyway. We're gonna push a little bit into Madrid. Again, don't really care about actually achieving anything here. And then for the rest, uh, we can get Farnsworth, the American. In case we want to also do the same thing with America, we're going to prepare a collaboration government already with Farnsworth and someone who we don't have yet, but uh, we'll get there. All right, the smoke generators, just so I don't forget about them. The better destroyer hull is also something I want. And then excavation tech. And from now on, we're just going to uh, focus on military factories, get as many of these out as we can. Almost on time, we can get our third spy. And then we're also gonna get the infantry guy. We're gonna get a couple of trucks now. If you want to, you can get some, um, you can get some cars. I guess it's useful, but that costs oil and just a lot to think about. Okay, let's make the Hohe Shidan a little bit smaller. We're gonna add the artillery as promised and remove one more infantry. There we go. And we can also add support artillery. And we might as well get fire control and the better computing machines. Right, we're gonna dump these just so we get our special force. Ah, Chinese unit front. Just so we get our special forces cap. And now we should be able to, there we go. We can add one more Marine. We do Marco Polo bridge incident. Before you go to war, you should also double check your stockpiles. Depending on how they look, you should delete some divisions in training and shift your production lines around. I'm gonna delete a couple of those and then we can shift over to a bit more gun and a bit more support equipment. As ordered, these guys are all veterans. We don't really need to attack with these anymore. That just costs us equipment. I guess we still get a little bit of army XP. We could become spy master, but it doesn't really do anything. We don't have enough people in our faction. All right, Marco Polo bridge incident, which means we are done with our focus tree over here. I guess you can get the coal. That's about it. And I guess we can get aluminum later in China. But as I said, I am uh, much more interested in the supremacy of will. As for the Chinese war, we are going to... Actually, first have to declare war. And then we get a stupid Marco Polo modifier, which I guess is supposed to cripple the player a little bit so that they don't just roll over China. I don't think there's any historical reason for it. If you do, please tell me. Uh, if you know, please tell me because it doesn't make sense. Anyway, we are gonna click this one 
every 30 days or attempt to <laughs> unless i forgot about it oh but before we get into the china war it is very important that you subscribe if you enjoyed the video this far our field marshal will be hata he's a bit worse than terauchi but he doesn't have the politically connected trait so he gets more xp than terauchi for now we will just let the chinese grind up against us if you want to you can call in manchuko but i would not call in manguko since that will make your borders very large and your ai might do some stupid shit in this run i did not call in either but manchuko is perfectly fine if you want to use one additional tile for some more grinding oh, i guess we can get our fighters up here there we go since they're bombing korea okay there we go moving the planes around we get the naval invasion order into Qingdao with the marines and the second one i don't have too high hopes for but at worst that's just a little bit of distraction and softens these guys up so we're just gonna drop with the uh, marines into Qingdao and the other ones up here uh, these are 25 width these are 25 width we are good on both fronts we could add some support out here on these we should have enough yep and then i'm just gonna pump out a few more hohai shidan oh and we already missed a little bit of the escalated war in china once we have clicked this thing about two three times we can actually go there we go another one uh we could wait with our army xp but i'm just gonna get it now i guess we can get more guns because right now we are lacking guns and then after that, I'm gonna focus on trucks. As for planes, I guess we can get um, aircrew service and centralized control already. Infantry expert already, very nice. I think I'm gonna wait one more. Then we should be at 10%. Yep, 10% for the Marco Polo. There we go. And then we are going to start this offensive. We are going to tell Yamamoto to uh, do naval invasion support here. Tell this guy to stop training. And okay, we have already landed with our infantry and the trucks. We're gonna do a support attack with these guys. And there we go, that should be it. That is the war against China. Okay, because there's 11 divisions here, that's actually quite a bit. No. Uh, we're gonna get Loji Wizard. Definitely gonna be very useful. To hold the front, I sent in another 10 of our offensive infantry divisions. And then I'm gonna try and get the truck out here. Okay, they're actually pinning us here. Okay, I'm gonna do a counter pin here. There we go. It's actually quite a bit of an attack here from the Chinese. Not really used to that. So we are gonna get the cars over here already. So that's just so many Chinese here right now. Casualties should look very nice though. Yep. We can also get a little bit of Uncle Sam's juices. We only have one right now because of collaboration government. And then we're just gonna make sure that they drop all of the hats here. There we go. Sure. Might, uh, might as well get the medium chassis all right we are going to try and expand a little bit here because like these nine divisions here that sounds very okay never mind let's try and expand down here then and that should be the final marco polo one yep there we go secure china has been bypassed all right just gonna wait a second for them all to reshuffle and then we're gonna send all of these guys in these guys can pin and there we go small encirclement i guess we can make a little bit of a smaller border here down here is probably the nicest location to break through so let's just do that in the china wall i actually have to go down to four speed because otherwise things are going by way too fast this is actually one of my tougher invasions of china i must have sent too many divisions in too quickly because China is manning way more divisions on the front than usual. Regardless, your main goal here is to find weak spots in the enemy lines, and then once you have broken through, you can make encirclements. Our goal right now is to link the Qingdao army up with Army North, encircling Beijing, and a couple of the Chinese forces in the process. If you are struggling with this, you can watch the stream of the campaign, which I linked in the description, to see when and how I move my troops exactly. Okay, we have factories again. So I'm just gonna say goodbye to all of these for a second. Actually, we can probably get at least this small encirclement here. All right, you pin, you pin, you pin. There we go, small victory island at least. And then we can try and get these eight as well. The zero, you could get that one relatively early because you unlock the 1940 carrier airframe with that. So you could build some a little bit worse fighters and cars with these. However, I did not. Since by the time we get the zero, we can also just research the small airframe and not suffer the higher weight and production cost of the carrier airframe. How are our trucks looking? We can get one more truck division. Just gonna make sure that none of these are reinforcing here so there we go that's eight divisions and then let's get Xinan. that's the supply up in this region with this we also have the railroad connection here Ooh, 
infantry expert for you, infantry expert for you. And then I'm gonna stack up the specialized forces. And then we push into Menguko. Should actually be able to just auto this. Now we can also hire the Grand Battle Plan Expert. And then we're gonna use the Marines to push over here. There we go, support of the normal infantry. We are go just going to agree to the American terms. Cripples our PP, but that's fine by me. With that, we can just break through here. And we're just gonna try and get this pocket going. Get a bit of infantry as support because this motorized is very fast. And then with these, we can try and push in here. And there we go. These guys are all encircled, they don't have supply, so this will all just fall very quickly. Oh, last stand, no. Oh god, already one million. And then we are going to do the same trick that we just did on Qingdao with Shanghai. And same thing with uh, Hangzhou. Get these guys here, get the infantry he here. And everyone else should be on the main front. Perfect. Actually, we can push a little bit more here just so we get the supply up here. And I guess I did it incorrectly because we should be drawing arrow down here. And we can push a little bit since there's just one and two divisions everywhere. I guess we can also get that supply hub. All right, these are ready. We uh, don't need to do it yet, but I might as well send Yamamoto on the other tiles because we are going to need these as well. Keep on building mill factories. That's honestly everything we're gonna do from now on. Yes, we are civilizing the Chinese. It's very fitting that you say this as we are encroaching on Nanjing. Thankfully, nothing bad happened over there. If I was a pro streamer, I would now press the button that plays the laugh track. This invasion is also very simple. Our main goal is to expand as much as possible, as quickly as possible. And after that, you have one of two options here. You can either defend completely, because like the river line here is very nice to defend, or you just push. Uh, I think we're gonna push. Uh, might as well railroad these guys over here, because otherwise this front does not have a lot of divisions. Especially because the trucks are also missing still. Bit sloppy on my part. Usually I send the trucks in as well. I guess I forgot about this time. Right, let's get a few more SIF trains and I guess I can design some crappy cars already. Oh fuck, I forgot about- oh, I didn't assign the Aichi. And with these, they don't have any ports, so now we can close the pocket. Alright, uh, another, another naval invasion. Who would have seen this coming? Certainly not the Chinese. Into Fushu and Xiamen. Additionally, I also removed one of the sacks with the offensive infantry from the front, so they can immediately support the southern naval invasion. As for carrier warfare or supremacy, I would personally go for supremacy, but if you do that, you don't get the zero, you don't get your air research speed removed, so... You pretty much have to go for carrier warfare. I mean, you don't have to have to, but on uh, with these, I guess we can try a small encirclement. Not super interested in it, but hey, if the Chinese present themselves like that, then I guess we can try. Oh, uh, then no, just right click. And in the meantime, we can start the naval invasions. The AI is worse than me. At this point, I would... Okay, I wouldn't have guarded my ports at this point, but if I were to play against Japan, I would guard my ports. Or I would bait the Japanese into uh, attacking here. Anyway, a encirclement. And then we get those 24 divisions. We draw arrow. Whoops. We draw arrow. We draw arrow. It just doesn't happen usually. Fuck! Wrong front. Whatever. Thank god I did that because that arrow is not connected. I thought it was the arrow down here, but it was from the arrow up here. With these, we're just gonna try another small encirclement here. We can get to Wuhan. I heard there's good food over there. And apart from that, we're just gonna try and get these guys uh, connected with this front. So we have another pocket. That's just all the China is. A very giant pocket. And then, honestly, I'm just gonna let this auto. 1.5 million versus 60k, that's pretty bad. I believe if we take Changde and a few of those border cities, that should actually be enough. So I'm gonna see if we can micro the rest here. Man, I, I, I'm defeating the Chinese right now. I can't play with you. There we go. So, for China, um, because we have the collaboration government, we are just gonna annex everything anyway. For the interwar period, I wanted to stay historical. So instead of immediately declaring war on the Allies and jumping the UK from Germany's land, I waited until 1941 to stay historical. If you want to just dunk on the Allies, you can simply ask Germany for mill access, put your boats up and do a quick naval invasion of the UK. At this point, I recommend you research depth charges instead of torpedoes like I did, since our convoys will be raided, which I would have known if I played Japan historically at some point instead of just 
either focusing the US early or not touching the US at all. At this point you can also decommission the crappy infantry and turn all of them into the good infantry instead. And I did get the Chinese collaboration government now, but I would probably wait here as well, just before you start the war with the allies. I'm not a huge fan of puppets in Hoi 4, but the Chinese puppet helps us so we don't have to man the Indian and the Vietnam border. And the issue with creating the collab government already is that you can't do the development focus for some reason to get more resources in China. And... I suppose we can also get a little bit of some of the Dutch stuff. There we go, World War II. Who would ever invade another country? That's so cringe. You can either pick the decisive battle or the naval aviation expert. I went with the naval aviation expert today. We're gonna get the 2% more manpower because we're getting a little bit low. Because we are... I was about to say because we don't have women in the workforces anymore, but we don't have them anyway. I guess we're pumping out a bunch of infantry right now. And we are also gonna get the Saturday Night Life because 5% more special forces and I guess the specialization Eight oil! Let's go! That's so worth it. The goal now is to make a field marshal full of the infantry divisions. We're also going to build at least one stack of the motorized and one stack of the marines. So you'll have to balance your production lines accordingly. Uh, let's take a look. We have four. We need 20 more marines. So we can shoot two of those. Uh, in terms of planes, engines, three. Fuck, we still need, we still need heavy MGs and survivability studies. Guess I'm gonna get these now so we can build a fighter. As I said, building escort destroyers would have been better here. Simply replace the torpedoes with depth charges. We are going to pump out a bunch of those. We have uh, 1,000 convoys, so let's just focus the rest on these. And goodbye all of these. I'm only interested in the DDs. This one, I guess we're actually going to go for the one refinery. That's semi-useful at least. And now we also create our primary fighter. There we go. Ooh, I never added AA to these divisions as well. God. All right, Yamamoto, let's stack your navy up. Let's remove all regions, get you over to Hainan. And I guess we can also get the submarines over here. Not that they matter. And oh no, we could have deciphered Roosevelt. Actually, I'm just gonna train all of them. They should just get a little, I need a little bit of training from the AA that we added. Next, we are going to design some carrier naval bombers. I did not research any torpedo tech for these yet, but having higher torpedoes is obviously better. We can also add self-sealing fuel tanks so they have a bit more armor because the range for these does not matter. Also, I guess we should just if I'm not doing the normal focus. Malaya! Welcome to the war. We're also going to assign Yamamoto to the Southeast Asia Sea and the Straits of Malacca. That should just be these two as uh, air zone. Sea zones. Yep, we could go. I also designed a flame tank. Sadly, they are still lacking a bit of speed, but they are not going to slow down our motorized too much and we can convert them later if we want to. You should have enough naval bombers by now, so just delete all your old ones and deploy the good ones on your carriers. Alright, the justification is ready. Uh, I guess we are almost on time. We are just gonna go in and quickly get some resources because we really need those. Okay, uh, Malaya was very defended. Uh, it's just one, one division. And can we get over there? Please tell me. Oh, looks like we can get over there. Nice. All right, let's get, I guess these, these seven should be fine. Should be much quicker. It's just so chill, you know, not having to worry about black eyes or not having an industry, or not having manpower. I can just walk. You know, like, oh, we're down to 600,000 men, but we're on limited conscription. And we have all of China. All right, these guys do some support attacking. This guy can cut them off. And then let's take out the rest of Java. Okay, we might need to get a little bit of air support down here. I don't want to build some air bases, but it looks like we might have to. Please don't be in here. I'm gonna get half of these guys out because you can see supply. Similar to the China war, we also try to snipe supply hubs and ports. If you're struggling too much and even Cass can't help you, you can just build ports. But generally speaking, you don't need to build these here, especially since you can always start another naval invasion to encircle divisions or take the port directly. And also make sure you're not running out of oil. I wanted some Soviet juices. Can do some convoy escorting here for now. I literally said I wanted Soviet oil and I did not get Soviet oil. I'm a monkey sometimes. I also disabled access to the Sea of Japan here so that our convoys don't travel through there and defending convoys is easier. We could go for a breakthrough flame tank but I don't really care right now. I just want to get a flame tank for the bonuses. Those two are enough. I guess they are marines but still that's a bit surprising. Okay let's encircle Batavia. We can probably take that. With these guys? With probably, I mean definitely. Okay, I believe that should be the Dutch East Indies once we take Java though. Actually, I think we still have to take um, Sulawesi, but that should secure most of the resources that we need and also very nice because that cuts off the allies from these resources. And now we can 
Well, I guess prepare the very fun part of island hopping. Yay. The greatest part of Hearts of Iron. Okay, with all of the crappy divisions that we get from our puppets, I'm just gonna send these over to the East Indies. And then they can guard the ports. And in the meantime, we are just gonna send Yamamoto over here. Once Yamamoto is over here. Ah, oh, shit, that's not enough. Okay. We could go for a smaller island top, but at this point, I assume it's some destroyers that are crappy. Yep, that's all of those. All right, bit of a bummer. Since our destroyers have the crappy range, I just split them off of Yamamoto. That way our capital ships and light cruisers can at least reach Hawaii. And hello, America. And Pearl Harbor has been Pearl Harbor. There we go. Sweden wants consumer goods. It's 5% consumer goods. I mean, we only have total mob. Okay, Yamamoto is ready again. And the British have started a counter naval invasion, but didn't really plan on me having divisions. So... They're all dying. We can invade Mexico. There's no ships here. So I guess we can try that. Let's get seven divisions. That's probably fine. Let's take this one. And this is exactly why I should have built escort destroyers instead of torpedoes. In this instance, we actually didn't need torpedo destroyers and the escorts could have helped with defending the home islands a bit at least. Regardless, these crappy destroyers will be put on convoy escort all the same. We actually did not have enough naval superiority around Hawaii, so I sent my entire navy over here for the invasion, sent our American spy to Washington and also built a radar station to boost our intel efficiency here. There we go. We have green on these two fields and now we're only missing the Mexican coast. For that we can select all the carriers. We might have to split this up even more. Oh no, don't tell me. Okay, cool. There's still the 1926 carriers that we are gonna have to split off. There we go. Get the 1936 carriers and they have the range. Navy is easy, at least against the AI. This is only something you do against the AI and it can be costly. If any ships intercept our carriers in Mexico, that can be a very costly mistake. If you can't get naval superiority, you might have to hop over Alaska or other islands and create some of the ships from no. the Navy guide I made. In this case, the carriers will be sufficient. We could do some improved worker conditions. Stability is getting a little bit low. And Mexico does have divisions here. Wow, what a surprise. And immediately, one thing I wanna do is uh, we're gonna stack the navy up again because i don't want these carriers to go walk around alone then we can get you guys over here we can get the new destroyers to yamamoto and then we do convoy escort with these since we landed in mexico i made a field marshal front line with one infantry stack sending in more can overstretch our supply lines so i want to only send in a small amount of our army because right now we only have seven divisions over in america which is not a lot. And as always, when you make a naval landing, try to move out as quickly as possible and expand before the enemy arrives. This will be a bit scary and require some microing to make sure you hold. So if this is too scary, you can also make a landing with more marines instead of just the seven I used here. Okay, and the uh, marines are joining the front. We just have to wait until this guy gets some convoys. Almost here. And only partially intercepted. There we go. We don't need the radar station in Hawaii anymore. So let's just build airport and uh, radar station here. This one, we're not gonna send this one in. Let's just way too untrained. Pin this guy up here and there we go. Now we can just do a very chill invasion for the south of Mexico. Just gonna assign all of these guys and I'm just gonna auto this. The north, we could probably auto the north right now as well. Since they're just panicking. Yeah, let's just auto the north a little bit. To guard our ports, I use the expensive infantry. Not because you should, but because I'm too lazy to switch our training lines. And we're gonna assign Yasuchi. Not that I really care, but we can just use whatever. I mean, get a little bit more stats on these, I guess. Okay, uh, north is slowing down a little bit. I'm gonna wait. And we're gonna micro. If we take Hermosillo, that might be enough. And if we take that one back, before the AI recaptures everything, there we go. In that case, let's also just clean up the pockets here. And then we just extend the front line properly again. We get, we have the marines here, we have the trucks here, we have these here. I'm gonna get, I guess let's get the 30 guys here. And we can already move these and these here. Railroad everyone. Okay, let's get a flame tank on these. How many do we need? 500, okay, it's fine. We can also get a collaboration government with the US. 
which I will... Oh, not, not with Farnsworth. There we go. Gladly gonna take that. 2,000 fighters. That's definitely enough right now. So we can pivot a little bit into some cas. Look at the swarm arriving. <laughs> Why does Mexico not have air bases? For now, I'm just gonna grind up against the American Air Force a little bit. We might have to push a little bit to get the Texan oil. Combined Arms Expert Officer Corps. That is nice. I will take that. Get better depth charges and better sonar. And then we can get some escort destroyers going. Oh my god, they landed in Japan. They actually did it, those mad lads. There we go, let's get a bit of oil going in Japan. This I would normally not bother with, but because of my mismanagement with the escort destroyers and the fact that we'll soon run out of oil, I decided to get a couple of these going. Usually, I would just keep building mill factories. Okay, mountaineers, that's actually very nice. Now we can get a mountaineer attack. Not that it really matters, but I mean, rangers are nice. There we go, pioneers on these. I think we can also also add ranges. We lose a couple of modifiers, but I think I'm fine with ranges on these. I would push, but the US is grinding up on us, so I guess I'm fine with getting more war score. We can get a couple of cars, just just a couple, just 1,000 cars. Gonna take a lot more damage now because that cars does not have any air defense. I hate auto deploy. <laughs> Just, I just forget about it every single fucking game. In case uh, anybody was wondering why we were missing 40,000 guns. We are not. Still very nice. <laughs> How busted these guys are now. Alright, uh, let's get the motorized over here. I'm sure they can push over the mountains here. I kind of want to push, but uh, the, the AI doesn't stop. So it's, it's just always so addicting, you know? Fine, uh, we have to end this game at some point. There we go. Oh, veteran divisions, <laughs> veteran motorized. Allies are sitting at 21 million. All right, uh, we could continue pushing down here. Yeah, there's nobody here right now, so let's make the front a bit smaller. And honestly, with how strong those motorized divisions are now with their veteran status, you can just continue with making the front line smaller and smaller while you push into their capital. The topics on stream got a bit too derailed from this, but honestly, the invasion against the US is super chill. Just get your fighters and some cars out, assign them to your armies if you are too lazy, and auto the front with your motorized. You can also go for encirclements if you would like to keep the XP on your motorized, but I don't have any plans after taking out the US, so I just that the AI handle most of the US. Hey, the US is out. Brother, this is such a mess. As for Canada, do I really care about Canada? Yeah, we're just gonna hold against Canada. That seems like the sensible thing to do. We're also going to take the collaboration government in the US because I mostly just didn't want to bother with this or with the Germans getting the US. All right, then let's get mill axis. Where are my two beautiful... There we go, the Ottoman Marines. 12 should do the trick. And I'm gonna be bold. I'm gonna just go through Dover, I think. That should work. Excuse me? I didn't even have to get my navy over here. All right, I guess we're just gonna do it like that then. Just through the channel and there's not a single ship. Well, I mean, a German ship is... I'm actually upset about this. Like, okay, sure, maybe... Like, okay, they, they didn't run out of oil. They actually have ships here. They are not protecting the channel, and there's not a single division in Dover. Like, I know it's the AI, I know the AI is stupid, but this is ridiculous. Alright, I guess we are just going to draw front. Supply might be an issue, but it's not gonna be my issue. We have actually... Uh, one. And now that I taught you how to play as the good guys, I can also teach you how to play as the bad guys. In this guide, we played as France, and we did not lose a single tile against the smelly Germans. 